What's good, guys? Today is Monday, January the 25th, 2021. I found an article regarding the village of Rosemont. Uh, it's from a little over a month ago from casino.org. Uh, it's very interesting, so please bear with me. The title of the article is Rosemont, Illinois gets $2.8 million from backers of failed Emerald Casino. And I had spoke about the Emerald Casino ordeal previously on the channel, but this article will kind of sum it up a little bit better. It says the village of Rosemont in Chicago land is getting a $2.8 million settlement to resolve an 18-year-old legal battle with the backers of the ill-fated Emerald Casino. They have a picture of Rosemont Mayor Brad Stevens, uh, but it's blurred out. You can't click it up and you can't clear it up. So, But I think from the Kenneka Jenkins case, we're all pretty familiar with uh, Mayor Stevens and what he looks like. We don't need to see that again. As the community that was to host the capsized project, village officials were hoping for a windfall of at least $45 million to compensate for its failure. The Emerald Casino was once a very big deal for Illinois and for Rosemont in particular. In 1999, the Illinois legislature rewrote state gambling laws to allow local businessman Donald Flynn to relocate his East Dubecky. I'm sorry, I don't think it's pronounced like that. I may be wrong. Uh... I think it's actually pronounced Dubuque. I, I could be wrong, though. Illinois gaming license to Rosemont. A stone's throw from Chicago's O'Hare Airport, the new casino was expected to generate $400 million per year. Rosemont would receive an estimated $6.4 million annually in taxes for the first 10 years, plus $1.5 million a year in rent. Mob ties? The deal seemed wired shut and the casino broke ground in October of 1999. Meanwhile, Rosemont officials kept their end of the bargain, building a seven-level, 8,500-space parking garage for the casino. But in 2001, the Illinois Gaming Board, better known as IGB, suddenly and unexpectedly revoked the Emerald's license. The board found the company had repeatedly lied about its ownership structure, which had altered significantly since it was granted initial approval to remove to Rosemont. And this is a quote from the IGB's uh, decision. It says, The regulator said it also suspected the company had associated with organized crime. This was never categorically proven by the IGB, but several individuals with reputed links to the Chicago outfit were found to have concealed their interest in the project. The license was eventually awarded to Neil Bloom's Midwest Gaming, which built the Rivers Casino in Des Plaines, just a few miles from Rosemont. $10 million legal bill? In 2014, a federal judge ruled that six former Emerald officers owed various creditors $272 million due to individual compliance failures that had led to the loss of the Rosemont gambling license. Rosemont itself was towards the end of the line for a payout, the village had spent $10 million in legal fees over the past two decades chasing the money it was belie it believed it was owed. But incumbent mayor, Brad Stevens, is philosophical about the result. The parking garage the village built for the casino currently serves the Parkway Bank Park Village Entertainment District, which was built on the site earmarked for the casino. Opened in 2012, the entertainment district might not be bringing in the numbers the casino developers had promised, but it has been a success. We were in a negative position cash-wise, Stevens admitted, but we have a parking garage as an asset. We were never going to recoup the legal fees, but it's better than getting nothing. We were handed lemons and made some pretty tasty lemonade, he said. So I'll go back to this small little snippet from this decision from the IGB. And there's a link there that you can click regarding the Chicago outfit. So I'll click the link. It takes me to a separate article also from casino.org, but this time this article is dated October the 6th of 2020, and it's titled, Convicted Illinois Bookmaker with Ties to Chicago Outfit Faces New Federal Charges, and this is the interesting ar article. It says, a Chicago man, excuse me, start over, a Chicago man who in, 20, in 2002 was sentenced to three and a half years in federal prison for operating an illegal gambling ring under the protection of the mob is facing new charges. 
Now, this is where we need the picture cleared up and cleaned up, but you can't even click it up, so I'll have to do some digging to get this picture, but under the picture, it says a known Chicago mobster seen here is facing new charges of running an illegal gambling network. The man was previously connected to Jimmy Inandino. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Illinois alleges Gregory Emmett Pelowian, 66, of Elmwood Park, ran an illegal sports betting business from 2015 through 2019. He's been charged with one count of conducting an illegal gambling business. In paperwork filed with the U.S. District Court in Chicago, federal authorities are seeking the forfeiture of $274,070 and a 2017 Audi automobile. The illegal gambling charges carries a maximum sentence of five years in prison. The DOJ reminds that a charge is not evidence of guilt and the defendant is presumed innocent until the government proves guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Checkered past. Pelowian is certainly a name familiar with Illinois law enforcement. His rap sheet dates back decades, first starting with a 1980 conviction for organizing so-called juice loans from the mob syndicates to indebted gamblers. Juice loans are offered by loan sharks. The money comes with interest rates far exceeding the established legal rate. Those who do not pay on their loans are often subjected to threats and violent retaliation. Then there's this little quote. Suspected of running an illegal, an illegal sports gambling ring, officers approached Pelowian in 1995 after spotting him writing ticket wagers for gamblers. Pelowian reportedly stuffed the papers in his mouth and fell to the ground and rolled around to swallow the paper. That's how bad he did not want the police to see what was wrote on that paper. So he swallowed it and rolled around on the ground like a fool so that they couldn't see what was wrote on that paper. When police raided Pelowian's home three years later in 1998, they found a secret wall compartment with more than $150,000 in cash, jewelry, gold, and soluble, soluble paper bookies prefer. Pelowian pleaded guilty in 2002 to federal racketeering charges and running an underground bookmaking business. Pelowian admitted he was aligned with Rocky Infelice, a feared Chicago outfit mobster and enforcer. Pelowian said mobster Jimmy Inandino provided juice loans and followed up on outstanding debts. Quote, I'm telling you straight that I treated everyone fair. I worked hard and an illegal thing. But honestly, I thought if I paid taxes, it took the illegality out of it, Pelowian said at the time. Pelowian said that a better would be told cannons would be pointed at his head if he didn't pay. Prosecutors declared during the 2002 sentence. Yes, you heard that right. Legal Illinois Sports Betting Sports betting is now legal in Illinois so long as bookmakers lawfully obtain permits from the state. DraftKings, FanDuel, William Hill, Bet Rivers, and Point Bets are all up and running online at brick and mortar casinos and horse racetracks. New sports bettors can register in person or online. As major collegiate and professional sports return this summer after putting after being put on hold because of the virus, Illinois sports books reported taking roughly $52.5 million in wagers in July. It says, unlike illegal bookmakers, regulated sports books share profits with the state. Along with an upfront $10 million licensing fee, operators direct 15% of their sports betting win to the government. So I thought it was really interesting that this is a clear uh, connection. This is not a muddy connection. This is not a shadow man. This is none of that. This is a clear connection from the Chicago outfit to Rosemont itself. Um, I know I've at least implied it in the past. Um, I've did everything I could to show it. And this is a clear, um, definite tie to them. I wanted to show you a clear picture of Jimmy Inandino. Um, he's very very easily recognizable. No problems there. I don't know if I can make him any smaller. Hopefully that shows on the screen. And this is the picture that they tried to blur out that I just had to go dig up. Um, relatively easy to find. That person that's not blurred out is um, Gregory Pelowian. Try to zoom in on him. 
That's the guy that swallowed the paper and rolled around on the concrete like a fool. Now the other two guys, yeah, they're kind of blurred out. Um, be interesting to know who they are, and you can you can see their faces pretty clearly. But I thought this article was rather interesting, at least interesting enough to bring to the channel. So I hope you guys have a great night. Thanks for watching.